Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss the chemicals like reagents and dehydrated media used in microbiology laboratory. Chemicals play a crucial role in performing microbiological testing methods and analysis. That means without chemicals and media, you can't perform the microbiological test. Some chemicals are used as a neutralizer. Some chemicals are a part of buffer solutions which are used in different methods like bio burden of products and swab testing etc. We are not here to promote any brand or defame any brand or product but it is not wrong if we say that brand matters a lot. And different brands have different prices, results and accuracy. So for that purpose after purchasing dehydrated media, we do a test named as GBT means growth promotion test on different recommended cultures as per certificate of analysis. Because if we want to have accuracy in microbiological results, we must assure the quality of media from any brand. Here is a quality chart that is for your lab for good laboratory practices or also for good manufacturing practices. First you have cultures with training, you must know media preparation, lab work records, maintenance of lab equipments and instruments, documentation of your each test and record of results, different layouts for laboratory work and your result interpretation also the corrective actions if required. So here we are going to show you different dehydrated media bottles and their usage in pharmaceutical micro lab and also for medical device. We have MSDS and COAs of these all media and chemical bottles. COA shows the certificate of analysis of the product batch and MSDS shows the safety and precautions for chemicals and media. These are some solutions and stains that I use uh, for grammar staining and I have marked them for my ease step by step. So I don't bother to check SOP again and again. Here I wrote the opening and receiving date as well. So I will assure the expiry date as well. These are stains bottles. So don't assume that they should be clean. As you can see the numbers. So these are the step numbers for grammar staining. And soon I will make a video for gram staining that would be detailed for pharmaceutical and medical device industries. We are using these media and as a microbiologist you have to know why we are using these media. I have write down the receiving date and opening date and the calculations as well. It's a pseudomonas media bottle and I have already written the calculations as per my requirement on daily or regular basis. As per the written description, it is also mentioned that uh, I have to add this cl uh, glycerine and this brand is Dijing and I have to add 10 ml glycerine for 1 liter and already mentioned the receiving date on this bottle. So whenever the product is received, I mention everything on the bottle. Receiving dates and opening dates are important for chemicals and inventory. For basic inventory video, check the link in description box. These media bottles are for the fluid thioglycolate medium and this media is used for sterility testing for anaerobic bacteria detection. This bottle is going to be end soon so I already ordered the new bottle of fluid thioglycolate medium as you can see the receiving and opening date so I open and do growth promotion test for this bottle. I am also going to make growth promotion test uh, video then there I will explain all the steps of growth promotion testing. So I finish this one and then I go to the next one. My next bottle is of PSB means triptych soya broth and it is also used in sterility testing and in other testing like bio burden and swab testing and also for culture growth etc. In this bottle you can also see the um, um, RD and OD and uh, here it is written the, its um, expiry date and also the description available. The brand name is Merck and uh, it's a granular media. I prefer granular media for due to some reason. I will share my views on granular and powder media. Here you can see the lot number which you should mention on your GPT report. 
These both medias are very general purpose media. The one is Zaprotexus agar and the another one is Streptoxia agar. We both use in general purpose. So for yeast and mold growth, we use Zaprot Texas agar. And for aerobic microbes, we use Streptoxia agar. Here you can see I wrote down the opening and receiving dates on both media bottles. Here you can see the expiry date on one bottle. For storage, I use 30 to 35 degrees centigrade. Mannitol salt agar is a new discovered media or selective media for Staphylococcus aureus and other Staphylococcus species. I did GPT and received MSDS along with the media bottle. Also the certificate of analysis in which the growth strength mentioned for each expected microorganisms. I wrote it down both receiving date and opening date and opening date is when I performed GPT. This mannitol salt agar is a selective media for Staphylococcus aureus detection in bioburden and other testing methods. Numer Hilton agar and it's a brand oxoid. We use it for antimicrobial testing, bioassay and, and antibiotic potency testing. Usually in universities and colleges we study and practice the media preparation as uh, to measure each ingredient individually but these bottles and these type of dehydrated media really helps because it is not consuming much time because in micro lab you have very very less time in pharmaceutical or any kind of industry. Here you can see some media bottles. These media bottles I rejected on the basis of growth promotion test. So for that reason I am going to discard these all media and along with their dehydrated media. I don't want to mention the brand name but here are the TSA McConkey and Zappos Texas Agri Media. This chemical I use in Macworlin index preparation for culture dilution and culture maintenance work. It is named as barium chloride and it is mentioned in guidelines like USB and BP etc. I checked pH when I received this. This one is sodium chloride and already I have prepared a huge video for this in my channel. You may check the video link in description box. Here is a description and it complies as per these tests and it's used in preparation of buffer slime peptone water. It's also used in normal slime and culture dilution. It works as to supply essential electrolytes to transport osmotic balance. This peptone water is used to provide nitrogen, vitamin, minerals and amino acids. Those are essential for microbial growth. It's in powder form and we use it as per recommended and suggested grams per liter. Media and any chemical those are in powder form are hydroscopic in nature. So their safety and storage is very important. For chemicals storage, you can also prepare the hood in your lab where you can store the chemicals separately. This is sodium hydroxide pellets and these are extra pure. Let me show this. So it's in pellet form and it's used to prepare a buffer that is mentioned in USP chapter 61 for microbial limit test or bio burden. I call them a family and yes it is a family because these all members use them for making one solution that is buffer slime peptone water. This one is best of best potassium dihydrogen phosphate and it's extra pure. It's provide electrolytes to the organism growth. Another one is sodium phosphate dibasic anhydrous. It's also perform the same function but gives the sodium instead of potassium. These both have same functions and they give electrolytes to the organism growth. Sodium chloride is already discussed but it gives electrolyte as well and provides transportation of cell of organism. This one is a peptone water that I discussed already and showed already to you. This thing is 280 and it's performed as reagent that only create. Its function is to neutralize the antimicrobial property of your sample and when it comes to buffer, it really performs its activity that mentioned in USB and BP as well. 
We store these chemicals in room temperature that is 25 to 30 degrees Celsius and after preparation we have two to three options like the store liquid media in a refrigerator and remelt through water bath whenever is a requirement or a need. Another one is like uh, pour the media into petri plates and pre-incubate as per recommended temperatures before doing test. Twin eddy also named as polysorbate 80. Its function is to neutralize the antimicrobial property of your sample and then the sample gives the exact enumeration of microbes. These both repair the system of the cells those are injured and gives the low pH. So basically, these both repair the injured cells which are sensitive to low pH. So these are my usual media I used in my lab and of course I have certificates and MSDS of each chemical and media available in my microbiology lab. If the brand or company or supplier don't give the COA or MSDS, don't receive the chemical or media. Let us show you how we maintained our file of GLP because these things are helpful in different audits either internal or external. We prepared this file as per the ministry requirements. Here are some contents in this file as list of chemicals and media in microlab, list of equipment in microlab, list of glassware apparatus in microlab, COAs of media and chemicals, MSDS of media and chemicals. So this is our file we prepared so far. Once we had an annual external audit and they asked us about the media and chemical certificates. So we showed this file and they appreciated us to update all the things related to good laboratory practices. So GLP is concerned with maintenance of lab either with equipment, chemicals, documents and the list goes on. Hope you like this video. Please support this channel. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you learned something by this video. See you soon in our next video. Until goodbye.